In this video, we're going to be building a multilingual AI bot completely in Flutterflow with the help of OpenAI's API. This is the bot as a website or a web deploy, and let's go ahead and give it a try. So we'll click the microphone button and we'll record a quick response. What is two times two? Two multiplied by two equals four. Right, so we can ask the bot anything we want. We can also select the language down below here. And once we ask the AI assistant a question, it's going to return a response and also showcase a waveform as well. We can build this in around 30 minutes in a Flutterflow project completely from scratch. Again, just using one page in Flutterflow and some API calls uh, via OpenAI. So let's actually jump into Flutterflow and build this from scratch. Here you can see I've already started a new project. So we have the create project dialog. Here's the AI bot. Uh, we also have a package name. So I'm going to leave this as is. We have the theme that we could select. Again, I'm going to leave this as the default. And then I'm also going to toggle on enable web since we're going to be building a web deploy here. Make sure to leave set up Firebase toggled on and then we'll click next step. At this point, you could either create a new project just by clicking this button signing into your Google account and Flutterflow will create the project on your behalf in Firebase. Again, this project's going to be completely free. However, I've already set up the project, so I'm just gonna paste the project Firebase ID here. Okay, so I've pasted the key here and I'm gonna click connect. And there we go, it successfully connected the project to a Firebase project. And I'm gonna click auto generate configuration files. Everything looks great here, so I'll click generate files. As soon as these configuration files are finished, we are going to continue the setup here. All right, so it successfully completed the configuration. Now let's just continue on. We'll leave enable authentication off as well as the create user collection. We're not gonna have any auth in this project so anyone can use it. So let's click start building. Now to match the site that we created, we wanna start by adjusting some of the colors and fonts. Uh, to make it a bit darker, right? Right now we have the light mode theme and by default Flutterflow has both a light mode and dark mode toggled on. So let's just disable the dark mode and we will build a, a dark theme only. So we'll go ahead and jump over to the theme settings and go to colors and we will toggle off the dark mode theme. Now for the primary background, let's add a primary background. So we'll add a darker gray here. So this looks good. And then I'm gonna copy this and go to the secondary background and paste it in here and choose something just a little bit lighter. We might come back and adjust that, we'll see. Uh, now we need to make sure the primary text is white so it stands out against that dark background. And the secondary text, we will choose white and maybe just make it 50% uh, opacity. So now we have the basic color set up for our project. We're gonna leave the primary, secondary, tertiary, and alternative or alternate colors as well as the accent colors for now and semantic colors. And for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just stick with the outfit font as well. So let's go back to our page selector here and we can see this blank page that we have. We're gonna delete the default app bar because we also don't need that. And at the scaffold level, we're gonna turn off safe area. So now we just have a column within the widget tree and that's all. Now we need to add the center container, right? That we have within the page. And what we'll do is actually adjust this a bit so we can add a bottom bar as well as the, the language selector too, to match that original project we worked on. In the column, we're actually gonna wrap this in a stack. So I pressed Command B on Mac, and I can click stack, and now we have a stack created. So we'll set the width and the height as infinite here, so it fills the space. And to start, let's add that container at the bottom of the page, just to sit, it and sit there at the bottom and complete the page. So at the stack level, I'm going to click the plus here and add a container. Using the alignment tool, I'm gonna to click as center it at the bottom and I'm gonna make it infinite width with a height of let's do 60. So now we have a bottom uh, kind of section here to our website so there's not just a random centered container. It gives the site more structure. So now let's add that center container. So we have the column here, right? It's filling the space, but we need to align it center right within the stack. So we'll align it center here, and then we'll set the main axis alignment to center as well. 
And now we can add a container within this column. So we'll click here to add a widget, add a container, and let's set the width to maybe 400 and the height to 400 as well for now. We'll also add a border radius of 24 just to round it out. And the color should be set already for us. Now I'm gonna switch to web view. Right now we're in the, the mobile view. So I'll click on that. Uh, now you can see we have a web preview of what the project's gonna look like. So are you looking pretty structured and very similar to uh, the, the site that we saw? All right, so now we need to add the actual recording button to the container. So we're gonna do that uh, in a unique way. And this is actually pretty common within Flutterflow. If we need to hide and show various objects with a conditional builder and a page state, we obviously want to note when the user is recording a dialogue and when they're done. So to do that, we're gonna start by adding a page state. So we'll click on state management and click add field and we'll add is recording. We'll set this to Boolean and keep it at false and click confirm. So now we can go over to our container and we're gonna add a column and we're gonna center that and add some padding. That way anything we add in here, uh, will have some spacing, right? And then we're gonna add a conditional builder. So let me search here, I'll click that. The conditional builder allows us to show or hide specific widgets depending on a condition. And since we just set up that page state, we can head over to the if statement here and select that page state that we created. So if is recording is true, it's gonna show one set of widgets. And if it's false, it will show another. So we'll go to the if statement and let's search for an icon button. This icon button, since the conditional builder is, is recording is set to true, we want this to be the pause button to stop the recording because if the recording is currently happening, if is recording is set to true, then we wanna show the, the stop button, right? Because we know that the user is recording and we want them to give them the option to stop. So let's go to this icon button. Let's make it a lot larger. Let's do 200. Let's add a border radius of 100 and let's make the icon size 80. We'll also search for a pause button or a stop button. So let's type stop and here are some options. We'll just go with stop rounded. All right, we'll also adjust the fill color here. So I'll select the second or the primary background actually. So it's a bit darker and we can remove the border if we want to. Now we have our stop button. There's one other thing we want to toggle on here just from a UI perspective, it's the show loading indicator. This will be really helpful when we have the, the stop button because we're gonna take some action after we press stop and we don't want the user to just see a, a blank screen, a static screen. So this will show a loading indicator within the button while everything is loading. All right, so let's click on this uh, icon button. We're gonna press Command C to copy it and we're gonna click this eye icon next to else to show it. And you can see we've switched the condition and we can click in here and paste the icon. So now we need to create the record button, right? So we're gonna go down here and select a different icon. So I'll search for a microphone and maybe let's go with this outline rounded microphone. I think that looks good. So now we have our two buttons. We have the recording button and the stop recording button. We also want to add that waveform, right? That we showcase while the AI is speaking. So to do that, we're gonna to go to the column level and we are going to search for Lottie animation and add that here. I'm gonna drag that to the top of the column and I'm gonna set the width to, let's do 400 and the height to 200. And what we'll actually do is click on the column here, set the main axis size to uh, shrink, and then we're gonna remove the height on the container. And we can also do it on the width as well. So it'll be pretty interesting because this container will dynamically shrink to whatever is being shown within it. So we can go to implicitly animated, toggle this on and set this to ease in out, maybe with 300 milliseconds. So there's a slight animation whenever the container changes size, depending on what's visible. Now, we're not actually gonna be creating a live waveform in this video. We're just gonna use a Lottie animation in order to get the point across to the user that there is some audio occurring. So 
we'll head over to Lottie Animation and actually just find a waveform and upload that. So let me do that now. Okay, so I've gone ahead and found a waveform that I like and I've uploaded it here. I wanna keep on auto animate and loop so it continuously goes and we have everything already set up here. So now we have our waveform and we have our recording buttons. Now we also need to conditionally hide or show the waveform when the AI is speaking. So we need to add another page state and we can name this is speaking, right? So we'll add a Boolean here, just like is recording, keep it at false and click confirm. Then we'll click on the Lottie animation, go to conditional visibility and we will select is speaking. So when the AI is speaking, this waveform will show. Now we need to go to the conditional builder and have the opposite. So these buttons do not appear when the AI is speaking. So we'll click conditional and we will go to page state and select the opposite, apply opposite statement to is speaking. All right, so now we have the conditional visibility set up here for the Lottie animation and the conditional builder. We also maybe want to add an animation for the UI. So we'll click on the Lottie animation. We'll go to animations here and we'll add a fade and toggle on hide before animating. So it'll start hidden and fade in. Now let's also apply this to the conditional builder as well, just to make the UI look a little better. All right, so now we have two animations, the conditional visibility. Now we need to actually begin to set up the actions, right? So let's start with the record button. The record button needs to both set is recording to true and we then need to actually record what the user is saying. So let's first add the action to set the page state is recording to true. So we'll click on the icon button. We'll go to the action flow editor and we will click add action and search for update page state. Let's select is recording and this will be set to true. Now let's go ahead and copy this action and head over to the stop button and we'll add the action here by pasting it and set it to false, right? So we have true and false. Now we need to actually add the custom action in order to store the words that the user is saying. So let's actually head over to the template project to check out what that looks like. And we will just be copying over the custom actions from the Clonable project. The link will be in the description. Okay, so here we're in the Clonable project. You can see what we're creating looks very similar to this, right? We've added that bar at the bottom, the container. We have the centered container right now. So we're pretty close. If we go to the custom code section, we have three custom actions here. Start text recording, stop text recording, and then fetch speech and play. What we'll start with is the start text recording. So this is using one pub dev package and it actually listens to the user. And whenever we get a result from listening to the user, we update a app state variable, which we're going to create named speech to text response with whatever the recognized words are. So it will continuously listen until we trigger the stop text recording action, which we will trigger from pressing the stop button using the same pub dev package. So let's go ahead and add these custom actions to our project. We'll start with the action name, so we'll copy that. So let's create a new custom action and paste the action name. Then let's go to the top line 10 and copy all of the custom code from the start text recording that we need. We'll head back and we will paste it here. Then we also need to add that pub spec dependency so we'll go back, go to the pub spec dependency, copy that and add it in our project. Make sure to hit this refresh button so we load the pub spec uh, package into the code editor here. All right, so we'll save the action and we need to go ahead and create that app state as well, the speech to text response, which we reference here. So I'm actually just gonna click on this, copy the name of it so we spell it correctly and we'll go to app state and we will add the app state variable. It's gonna be a string and 
It's not a list and we can keep persisted off and we'll click create. Now we need to add the stop text recording action. So same thing, we'll click add and create a new action. Let's go back to the project, get the stop text recording name, we'll paste it here. We will go to the top line 10 of the action and copy all the code below. And we again, we need to add that pub spec dependency, so let's do that. All right, and again, hit the refresh button and click save. So now we have this start text recording and stop text recording actions. We've also added some console logs here to help debug if you're ever interested in, in adding more. So we have stopping text recording. We also have starting text recording here. You would be able to find these in the console uh, when you're using this in the web deploy or in test mode or in run mode. So let's go back to the page, then select the widget tree, and let's go first to the start recording button. So we'll click on this icon button, we'll open the action flow editor, and we will add that brand new custom action, start text recording. Now let's go back and go to the stop recording, and we'll click on the icon button, open the action flow editor, and we will add the other custom action. All right, so now we've started the text recording and successfully stopped the text recording. And all of the text information is gonna be saved within this speech to text response app state variable. Now we actually need to add an API call to call OpenAI, receive or return a response, and then convert that response into an audio message. So let's add that new API call. This is the basic chat completion API call. So again, we're gonna copy this directly from the project. You can find all this information within OpenAI's documentation. This is the basic implementation to just receive any uh, chat completion. So we'll just copy the API name, add a new API, API call, paste it here, copy the API URL. And you could also get all of the OpenAI uh, API calls by uploading the Swagger file. We have a great YouTube video about that uh, and it'll instantly import all of OpenAI's API calls for use. So this is a post request. Now we need to add the, the auth header. So let's copy this, paste it in here. We need to adjust the body. So again, I would just copy this body directly from the clonable project. However, this is a very basic uh, JSON body. Again, you could take this right from OpenAI's documentation, and we'll actually run through the message that we send here. So the content, right? We send the user's message, the prompt, which we'll set up. But I have this statement here, return a response that could be read aloud in a total of 13 to 15 seconds in and then a language code. I did this because I wanted the AI assistant to be more conversational. I didn't want it to go on a two to three minute rant or conversation. I wanted it to keep its responses relatively short hence keeping this in the content. So now we need to create some of the variables, right? So here we have one variable, API key auth. So we'll go to variables, paste that, change it to a string. Then in the body, you'll notice we have two variables, prompt and language. So we'll add the prompt variable, set that to a string, and we'll add the language variable and set that to a string as well. So now if I go back, you can see uh, it looks like we almost have everything here. Oh, it looks like we forgot to set that to a string. So if I go here, all of these are purple, they're properly implemented, and we could click add call. So now we have the API call. Now you'll notice we have this variable API key auth, and that's because we need to provide an open AI API key. To do so, we're actually gonna create a new state variable, app state variable. So we'll click here, and we'll name this API key. And we'll keep this as a string and we'll keep this as persisted and click create. We'll also toggle on secure persisted fields. So ideally that is encrypted uh, within the device. So at this point you could go and get your API key and paste it into this field. I'm gonna skip that for now, but again, make sure to go and get your open API key, paste it in here uh, so you can actually use the API call we just added. All right, so let's go back to our page and we need to add more actions to the stop button. So we have this button here and we will open it up. So after we stop recording, we need to pass that information to the API. So let's click plus here and add the API call. So let's search for API call 
and we'll select get response. Let's name it, uh, maybe open AI response, and we will add the additional variables such as the API key. We'll set this to the app state variable API key, the prompt, which is again, that app state speech to text response, and then the language. Now language is actually pretty unique. We can click out of here and this is extremely easy to set up all thanks to Flutterflow. So we'll go to settings and integrations and let's go to the languages tab. Right now we have no languages set in the project. So first let's set up a language. Since I'm an English speaker, I will select English and set that as a primary language, but let's add a few more. Maybe Spanish, French, let's do Arabic and Chinese. So now we have a bunch of different languages and we could click translate all, although we don't have any text really used within the project, but at that point it would translate all the text in the project. So we have different languages set up. And if we go back to our page, let's actually go to the stack and add the language selector widget. It's going to appear up here. Let's do center bottom alignment and maybe add padding of 100 so it sits just right above the bottom here we could also add it within the container here let's add the background color to the secondary color and let's hide the flag and set a text theme style so now we have the language selector right so we can actually pass in if we open up the api call again we can go to language and pass in whatever the current language code is so the current language code in internationalization so it will pass, you know, EN if I have English selected or uh, the specific language code for the language I have selected. We automatically add the conditional action here to see if the response worked. So for debugging, let's add a, a failed statement. So we'll say show snack bar, API call failed. Obviously make sure to set this up properly if you put this into production, but for now we're just setting this for debugging purposes. Oops, let's change this to purple. Great. Now let's add the next step, right? Once we get an API response, we need to convert that into an audio message and play that. That's where this next custom action comes in. So let's click out of the action flow editor and jump over to the custom actions. Again, custom code. So let's go back to that other project and now we need to add the fetch speech and play custom action. What this custom action does is it gets the prompt text returned from that API, and then it does a post call to OpenAI and returns an audio file and then plays that audio file, right? So if you wanted to adjust the voice or the speed, you could adjust that here. Again, make sure to refer to OpenAI's documentation. But the other thing we do is we calculate the duration of the audio file that's returned. That's what this section does here. So we play the file, the audio file, but we also return the duration of the audio file in milliseconds. And there's a unique reason why we do this. It's actually to set up a timer to show and then know when to hide the waveform Lottie file that we've added. So that's why we return a value that's an integer. That integer is the duration of the audio file in milliseconds. So let's copy this over. So I'll copy the action. Let's add a new action here. Paste the name. Go to line 10, copy everything below it. We will add a return value, an integer and we'll add two arguments here. The first is prompt text, it's a string, and the next is API key. Only API key is knowable, although you could toggle this and just adjust the, the, the function if you wanted to. I believe I just left that as knowable, although it, it could be adjusted. All right, so we have prompt text and we have API key, and if I save this action, I might get a pop-up that says my arguments don't match my function, that's okay. Uh, as long as you copy everything over properly, I'll click yes, it should work fine. So now we have all the custom actions we need, the custom APIs, everything in here, so we can successfully set up the rest of our project. So we'll click on the button here, and now let's go to the true side, right? So if the API successfully returns a response, we now wanna go to that custom action, fetch speech and play, 
and we need to return the message. So in order to fetch that JSON response, you could either directly type in the JSON path to whatever is returned from OpenAI, or we could utilize the fantastic API call uh, UI that we've put together in Flutterflow and utilize some of its features with the response and test tab. So the response and test tab allows us to test the API call and then name various JSON paths as variables. So we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna have to paste my OpenAI key in here and also provide a random prompt. So pretend I pasted my, my AI key here, my API key, and I'll add just test as the prompt. Then I'm gonna click test API call. Now I'm gonna cut this and actually paste in my real API key test it and then uh, come right back as soon as I've, I've tested it. Okay, so I successfully tested the API. I've just quickly removed my API key after doing a test here. And you can see uh, all we need is the content path. So let's scroll down, let's go to recommended and here's all the options. But what we really need is the reply from the AI, which is could you please specify the language code since we didn't pass anything here. So we'll click selected We'll go over to the selected panel and name this JSON path message and click save. Now, if we go back to the action flow editor, it makes it a lot easier to actually select the path of the prompt text. So here we'll go to action outputs, open AI response. We'll select the JSON body, JSON path. And since we set up a variable JSON path, we can just select message and then click confirm. The API key again needs to be your app state. So that will be API key. And that's pretty much everything, right? So let's name this AI voice response. Okay, so we can name that. And we need to name this action output because this is the integer or the duration of the audio file in milliseconds. So we need to use this, right? So we need to give this action output variable a name. So we'll leave it as this. And actually, let's let's just name it uh, audio file duration. That way we, we don't mix it up. So we have that. Now we need to set up a few different things. We need to first update the page state since as soon as this action is completed, it's going to start playing the audio. So we need to show the waveform, right? So we're going to update the page state that we set up is speaking and set that to true. Okay. We also need to store that audio file duration somewhere. So let's store that at the app state. So we're going to click off here and we're going to go to the app state and set up timer value and set this to an integer. This is where we're going to store the duration of the audio file so we can use it as the timer value. So we'll create this and we'll go back. And then we will add another action under here, add action, update app state, and we'll update the timer value to be the output from fetch speech and play, which is the audio file duration. So if we go here, we'll see audio file duration, select that. And we also are going to go ahead and clear the speech to text response because we've already passed it to the API. We've already returned a response so we can clear that for the next time we want to use it. So let's clear that value. All right. So now we also need to set up a timer so that way we can show the audio for as the audio waveform for as long as we need and then hide it right after the duration. So to do that, I just kind of add a dummy timer within the page. So we'll add a timer. And let's just add it uh, within the stack, right? And we could center that here and we could put it behind this container. We could set the font size to one, make it transparent. We just want to hide it entirely, right? We're only using the, the timer action specifically. So the countdown time we want to set to the timer value app state variable. Maybe let's set the format to a second. So it's even smaller. It's as small as possible down here. We also want to have a conditional logic is speaking to true. So we only want the timer to be shown into start uh, when is speaking is set to true. Now, when the timer goes off, once the audio duration has completely finished, 
we want to update the page state to say is speaking is false. And we also want to reset the timer. So we'll reset the timer and reset timer actually needs to be before updating the page state because we need to reset the timer. And then when we update the page state is speaking to false, it will then hide the timer. So we need to reset it before we hide it. So we've set up the timer properly. Now we actually need to start the timer as soon as that audio starts playing. So the custom action occurs, then we update the page state to set is speaking to true. The timer appears on the page. Then let's do a small wait. So the timer has time to initialize 100 seconds, and then we will do timer start timer. And we'll also at this point, oh, we actually need to put the app state. Uh, maybe let's do that first. So we update the app state and set the timer value. Then we set is speaking to true to show the timer. Then we give it 100 milliseconds to just load. And then we start the timer on the page. And that's everything we should need on the pause widget. There's the stop widget, right? So let's actually head on over to settings. Let's click on web publishing. Let's leave the settings as is and let's click publish and actually give it a try. So I'm going to click publish and wait for it to uh, deploy and I'll come right back as soon as it's done publishing. All right, so the website successfully published. Let's actually open it up and see if it works. So we'll click here, open it in a new tab. All right, so everything looks to work so far. Let's click the microphone button and see what happens. Can you tell me what Flutterflow is in two sentences? Flutterflow is a low-code visual development platform that allows developers to build mobile apps quickly using a drag-and-drop interface. It leverages the Flutter framework to create high-performance, natively compiled applications for both iOS and Android. Okay, so it worked. Now let's try in French. Let's give it a try. What is 2 times 2 equal to? 2 multiplié par 2 égal 4. Okay, so that's a win in my books. This is a beautiful web app that we could utilize. We could further customize it in Flutterflow. Again, this is a multilingual AI voice assistant that we built just with a few custom actions and an API call. You can also check out the clonable link to clone this project and start immediately, uh, or feel free to, obviously you follow the tutorial, so uh, adjust specific parts of this tutorial to create a new UI or, or whatever else. Again, this could be published responsively on iOS, Android, and web. Uh, so feel free to share your creations too with us on, on Twitter and across the Flutterflow community forum.